What's up YouTube, this is Camille from Backyard Wrenching and today I'm going to show you how to install coilovers or any suspension into your E46 BMW. In my case I'm going to be putting in my my coilover suspension, my Coney coilovers back in. So yeah, first thing you got to do is obviously I'm going to start with the front. Jack up the front, I'm just going to do both wheels at a time so I'm going to jack it up in the middle and put uh, jack stands on each side and remove both wheels. Okay, so once you got the car jacked up and the front wheel removed, I'm starting from the left side. So first thing you want to do is make sure you um, unclip all of the um, brake lines and uh, sensor wires out of their uh, little spaces so that you can um, so you can remove it and they don't get messed up. That's the first thing you want to do. Second thing, you gotta um, remove the front sway bar link. To remove the sway bar end link, you have to uh, do it from both sides. You have to use, um, I'm going to use a ratchet on this side and a box wrench on the other side to prevent it from spinning. Okay, so after I disconnected the sway bar, to make life easier, I disconnected the tie rod. You may not, may not have to do this, but if, if you're not able to remove this uh, strut, then you should disconnect the tie rod. It will make it much easier. After you disconnect the sway bar and the tie rod, you can disconnect the strut from the bottom part. To do that, you have to loosen it from this side the bolt right there that's uh, connected to the bracket you have to loosen that and then once you loosen that everything should be able to drop and then you'll be able to remove the strut this um, bolt is a uh, 18 millimeter okay after you remove that 19 millimeter I mean 18 millimeter bolt pull something underneath the control arm so that when you drop it it's not gonna um, pull on the, the brake lines so I put these um, pieces of wood under and then you should, with a few taps it should be able to come down Okay, once that's out, you can move it out of its way, and now we're going to move on to the inside top part from the engine bay. Now all you got to do to remove this entire strut is just loosen these three, three nuts on top and it's going to fall down. These right here are just uh, 13 millimeters. They shouldn't be too tight. Okay, so when reassembling the front strut, the easiest way to do it is by putting the adjustment collar all the way max to the bottom. So you have m much more um, room to to get this to stick out over here so you can put the nut on. It's very important you do it in, in the right order. So the order is, first thing that goes on is the boot. This little boot with the bump stop goes over. Then goes the spring and it sits onto the just adjustment collar all the way then goes this piece from the stock suspension with the rubber piece like that then goes this this washer is very important because if you don't put this washer then this won't it won't allow this part to spin freely and that is very important so next this washer goes over like this then this goes like that and finally the nut so the, the easiest way to do it is to pull out the, the shock as much as possible and hold it, have someone hold it for you so it doesn't go back in while you put this in order and you screw this nut on. Once that's on then your whole front strut is, is good and 
you gotta make sure you tighten this well. Also, one thing, if you're gonna hold this with with some pliers, make sure you use a, a rag in, in, underneath so that you don't damage the this um, the shock. Because if you damage that, you may it may not uh, you may start getting leakage in your in your coilover. So be careful to not damage that, but make sure to get this nut on tight, or else you will have some looseness in play in the strut. So what I did is I got myself these vice grips and I put uh, this uh, microfiber rag, folded it like four times so it's just really uh, thick and far from the strut, and I tightened it up, not too crazy tight, it's because still the, the teeth could go through the, the cloth, but just make it decently tight so you can tighten it down like that. And yeah, then just basically get a ratchet and get a ratchet on the other side, hold it like this and tighten it down nice and snug make sure it's nice and solidly tight once it's back together and everything is you tighten the top nut you, sh you could put it back in the car I also got these uh, strut tower reinforcement plates which uh, help strengthen the strut tower because when you stiffen the suspension it causes more stress on the the towers of the strut towers of the car one other thing, good thing to do is to grease up the inside of this um, where the strut goes in so that it can slide in really easily. And when you're putting it back in, make sure to align the pin. It's like a little circular pin right here. This is to align with the, with the crack in the back like that. So align that. And use a jack to jack up the, the whole front um, front jack under the uh, control arm so that it pushes it up all the way and once it's all the way up you tighten you can tighten the bolt back so once you align the pin with the the crack you take the bolt and don't forget to put the bracket on it goes on this way and it goes this way like that so make sure you jack it up so it's all the way up once you see the whole thing going up that means it's maxed out and then put it in and tighten it down hard Alright, so once this is tightened down, you can drop the jack and start putting everything back together. Uh, the tie rod, the sway bar, and link back to into the new location on the coilover. Right over here, I'll show you. Same lo same kind of location right there. And also, you can put um, all the little uh, wires and uh, hoses back onto their brackets, so everything is nice and tidy. And once you're done with that. You can move on to the other side and it's the same exact process. Okay, once everything's back in place, it should look neat like this. The, the things are all on the bracket. Right there. Sway bar and links in there on both sides. If um some coilover kits come with a short and end link, if not, you can buy um one. The one I'm using was from a Chevy Impala SS, which works very well with a lower suspension on the E46, so that's an option for you if you want to get lower end links. Also, another option I heard was people using E36 M3 end links, which work too. You can't, you cannot use the the stock end links if you're going low in your car because they're too long. And once everything's good, make sure you tie in the tie rod, make sure you tie in the sway bar, make sure you tie in the 19 whatever 18 19 millimeter bolt there holding in the strut, and make sure you tie in the tie rod over there. And finally, make sure this is tightened on top. If you don't have um, adjustable camber plates on top, then just leave it like that. If you would like to have some adjustability, you can remove this pin, which allows you to slide um, the things to the side a little bit, which allows you to change maybe like one to two degrees of camber, something like that. But I'm just leaving it the way it is, like that. And yeah, if we could put the wheel back on and then do the other side. Alright, so the front is done, and now we're on to the back. Once we do the back, we could readjust everything and make it nice and even all around. Okay, for the rear suspension, just like the front, jack the car up, put it on two jack stands in the back. First thing you gotta do is disconnect the shock. To do that, I already did it. It's a 18 millimeter, 18 millimeter uh, bolt like this and it's located right here and you loosen it 
from this side. This is where it sits. You loosen it, once you loosen it, it's gonna drop a little bit. And then you can um, push down on this and that will allow you to remove the stock spring. This is a stock spring. Once you remove the stock spring, you can install the adjustment perch that is provided with your coilover kit. Not all of them are the same. This one is a Coney coilover kit. So this is what mine looks like. You put it in like that and you tighten it down from the bottom. Another uh, with another uh, thing is tightened down from the bottom. Once you do that, you're um, you can remove. This is not stock, but you're gonna have a stock sh shock. You remove your stock shock by going into the trunk. Once you're in the trunk, we'll move move this over to the side. Remove this plastic piece. Remove all of the the clips holding on the rug on the, on the top over there. And once you remove that, you just pull this back. And, there, and over here, you're gonna, it's going to be exposed. Okay, to remove the rear shock, there's uh, two 30mm nuts. One here and one on the other side. Do not touch this one for now. This one is for the, sh the shock body. So just remove the two 30mm bolts and then you can pull the shock out. Okay, so to disassemble the rear shock, it's really simple. All you need is a 17mm uh, wrench or I have these special ratchet wrenches which are very nice. Put it on here on this nut. You also need a um, Allen key size 5mm to hold the, the inner part, the thread in place. So basically, really easy. Okay. To make everything simple, make sure you note the order of everything. Keep it all in place. So do it like this. Okay, that's fully disassembled. One more thing I'm going to be removing is I'm going to be replacing this part, the bump stop, because mine is really damaged. So I'm going to be replacing this part. pull it out and that's that put the new one in just like that okay so first the bump stop with the boot cover next little um, washer then this bigger uh, cone shaped washer, this way, like that. After that, you put on this, sorry, put on the sh uh, sh shock tower mount. And finally, this, like this. Nut on top and you tighten it the same way that I showed you how to loosen it with the, the Allen key and the 17mm um, the box wrench. Once you reassembled the shock, then you can put it back the same way you removed it with the, the two, two nuts going on top of that from the inside. And then the other part attaches to this here with the the, I believe 18 or 19 millimeter um, bolt it was but before you do that we have to install the springs and then after that you can attach the bottom part of the shock because it will be tough to do that with without um, with without installing the springs first so first I'm gonna put this back in and then I'm gonna show you guys how to how I put the springs in okay so with the adjustable spring perch installed and tightened from the bottom we can now put in the the new um, Coney spring, which is usually easier than putting in the stock one as it coilovers usually have some shorter springs. So in this, in my case, we are, we're not going to use the, the bottom portion, the bottom, bottom rubber um, piece, because instead we have that. 
instead of that we have just the, the perch so we remove the bottom part and the top one we can leave as is up there so same way as you remove the stock one you put in the aftermarket one and once you remove once you put in the aftermarket thing all you gotta do pull down this shock and connect it back to there with the with the bolt that the stock bolt to uh, put this on easily one thing that I always do is I use the jack and jack it up under here so it'll push this up for me so I can easily align it without having to um, to, like torture myself so just put the jack under here jack it up until it's aligned and then tighten the bolt down and then remove the jack after that that's all you got to do in the back to uh, install the, the coilovers in the back once you do that you can um, then adjust it using the the perch uh, however high you need the car to be that's all for the back and also one more thing yeah, don't forget to put all put all your stuff back in place the way you removed it on the in the trunk and make sure all the bolts are tight over here and everything is tight over here